Hello everyone, um, I'm really excited to be kicking off um, this episode of the research team, uh, particularly as this is about analysis. And I absolutely love research, I've been doing it for a long time, and I really love analysis. You know, I'm the sort of person who gets really down into the nitty gritty of all the detail and tries to find out all the patterns and, you know, I can lock myself in a room and do analysis for days. Um, but that's not always what the client wants to pay for. So I'm going to be talking today about when you can't spend lots of time doing analysis and ways in which you can cut your analysis time down and still deliver great results and great insights. Um, before I do that, I'm going to say a little bit about myself. So I'm Philip Healy. Um, I do UX research and I'm a UX consultant in a company here in central London called Amberlight. Um, I've been doing this for about 11 years. I have a background in psychology, so you know, I love people and studying people and doing research. And I guess I specialise in design research, and today's talk really is going to be about usability or concept testing, or where you've got a design or product that you want to evaluate and kind of quickly feed things back into the design process. Um, these are some of the things I do, um, you know, design and research, but I guess I probably specialise more in the research side of things, and some of the things I'm involved with. Um, the UXK conference, um, and I was a, a co chair in 2010 um, at the Munich uh, conference for the UXPA, which was the first one outside North America, which is something I was quite proud of. Um, before I go into active testing, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, I just want to sort of set the scene and talk a little bit about you know, the normal research process, the things we normally do. Um, and so you've done your research, you've got a load of data, um, as Beth has just described, you know, and you want to get stuck in. Uh, one of the methods that you might see people using is um, getting a whole load of post-its and writing down all your findings and insights, and then trying to sort of group them together into similar themes. This is sometimes called affinity mapping. Uh, this diagram here um, is actually something called uh, a mental model. I know Nick's going to be talking about them a little bit later on. Um, does this look familiar to anyone? Has anyone done this kind of you know, approach using post-its? Uh, you need a big room and lots of space. There never seems to be enough post-its. Um, so I love doing this. Um, you know, as you can um, <coughs> see here, there's me, really happy. <laughs> you know, that's just one wall. There are four walls, they all look the same here. So there's lots of different ways you can do this. Lots of coloured post-its. You know, you can use this for personas, for usability. You know, pretty much any research can be done in this way, and you know, your whole team can get stuck in. But for any sort of decent-sized research project, you really are looking at sort of three to five days of work. You know, so that's quite a lot to do this properly um, and cover all the angles. Um, another way is you can sort of do it in digital form. So we have something called a, a findings log, uh, really good for usability. So basically, you can sort of document all your findings, you can group them into um, themes or use cases and then you can prioritise them and sort them later. So this is great, you can sort of send this to your client and they can have a look and use it as a checklist. Um, this also takes sort of two to three days for a round of usability testing, so it's something you need to do afterwards. Um, one of the great things about this is that you can actually track how many different issues you have that are high priority, medium, low, any positives, requirements, and you can see what they are. So if you retest later on, you can kind of see if um, your recommendations and your design solutions have tackled those issues. And so it's really great for that. Um, and then typically, you know, we would do a report and you know, you've got everything prioritized, all your use cases. So it doesn't take too long, but normally that takes another two to four days. So this is great, and I love doing this. You know, I could spend twice this amount of time getting stuck in and trying to cover all the bases. But, um, Sometimes there is a problem with this. Um, you know, increasingly there's tight budgets, tight turnarounds, and <coughs> competing with somebody else. So often there's just not enough time to spend this amount of days on analysis and reporting. Sometimes there's no budget, and sometimes the client really wants to do UCD and kind of do kind of iteration. They might want to do two or three iterations. So you can imagine the cost getting bigger and bigger if you try to do you know the full scale analysis every time. Um, also, quite often the stakeholders aren't involved, so you, know, you would go and lock yourself in a room like I do and sort of do it all yourself, and then the stakeholders just get in the way and slow you down, and then you present to the stakeholders. So you're having to really you know, communicate quite clearly and maybe go a little heavier on the documentation. Um, so 
there is some kind of, you know, there's other solutions, and this is one way we've come up with. Just a phone. Is it? Yeah, is it come up? I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> um, we call it active testing, and the idea is that it's sort of a rapid and real time analysis, um, which in itself is nothing new, but we've got a particular method that goes along with this that involves um, the stakeholders being involved, um, which is obviously great if you can get them involved. Um, it's not always possible, but um, for this we'll assume you've managed to convince them to um, come along and spend a day observing the session. So this is what active testing is about. So step one is um, you kind of get all the stakeholders together in a room to observe the sessions. Uh, the way we do this to make this really act, uh, rapid is we have one day where we have four to five users and the stakeholders have to commit a whole day. And we have two moderators. We have one with the user and the second one is in a big viewing room with all the stakeholders and they're sort of watching the sessions together. Um, and step two is uh, we give everybody loads of post-its, um, small post-its of different colours and the idea is that you make all your observations on the post-its and beforehand you would have prepared printouts of all the use cases and the main screens and you'd either put them up on the wall or you put a big table and you start to annotate those. And you do this collaboratively. Um, so for it to work you've got to be organised and you've got to kind of train the stakeholders to do it in the way you want them to do it. Um, so if you imagine you're sort of there, um, you know, live and you've got a bunch of stakeholders and there's a session going on, you really don't want to miss anything. So you've got to be paying attention. You know, we say it's a little bit like catching butterflies. You know, you know there's a butterfly there somewhere, but you don't know when it's going to jump out. So you've kind of got to be ready um, for when it does happen. And when it does happen, you know there's other butterflies that might come out at any point. You know, these are the really good findings. So you can't spend too long. You've got to sort of document each finding very quickly and move on. Um, there's not really a lot of time to sort of sit down and discuss it in detail. So you know, you've got to keep moving. Uh, and one way to do this is to realise that not everything is a catch, not everything is worth noting down. There's some moths in there as well, and you don't want to waste your time catching those. Those are just noise, and they actually make the analysis more difficult. Because a lot of the time, we spend the analysis time getting rid of findings that aren't relevant or you know, are just noise, and really trying to find the high priority ones. So um, for the purpose of active testing, where we can't deal with everything, and document everything, we say you need to focus on the things that are surprising and useful. So those are, if you're doing usability or trying to improve a product, those are going to be the problems. You know, they're the things that confuse people, stop them from being able to complete tasks. So you definitely want to catch all of those. Those are one focus area. And another are the surprises, sometimes <coughs> pleasant surprises. Sometimes they might be a feature area or a menu item that everybody wants to get rid of. And it turns out that users love it. So you want to record that and make sure that stays. And then all the stuff in the middle where somebody says, hey, you know, I love the fact you've got left-hand side navigation on the website because you know, that's what websites do. You know, we kind of know that, that's why we put it there. So you don't need to re record all the comments. Um, and so you, um, you end up you know, putting these post-its onto the, the printouts of all the screens and you do this um, together. Um, and you can see that this looks quite similar to what a, a slide in the usability report might look like, except it's on paper with, um, with post-its. Um, and because you need to print out the sheets in order to do this, this works best if you have a limited and discrete number of use cases or screens or concepts. If you have a massive live website and you just want people to explore and go wherever they like, it's really hard to do active testing. So you, know, you really want to do it on prototypes or screens or sort of early stages of iterative design. Okay, um, there's a few other tips that I think are quite important if you're doing this type of live analysis. So you've got this whole room of people and you've given them post-its and they're all scribbling down on the post-its. So, you know, by session two, you're going to end up with, you know, a huge amount of data, a huge amount of post-its. Um, a lot of them will be repetitions, and there's a few things you can do to kind of make it easier. So, we tell people to follow a particular standard, so you have a header area where you put important information and then the message to insight that you write down. And we have this particular code, there's other ways you can do this, but we have 
symbols and icons to show whether it's an issue, whether it's a positive or a suggestion, you know, really simple. We also can use color-coded post-its for that. Um, we can say what user number it is, and we kind of have a, a title or a header that usually corresponds to a feature or an element on the page. And that really helps everybody doing it in the same way. And then, you know, you can show an observation or you can use quotation marks and it becomes great. Um, so, you know, in any case, you're going to end up with lots of these and sometimes you're tempted to just scribble things down and, you know, I'll come back to that later and I'll write it out in full. You're not going to remember. You're really, you're really going to struggle to remember, especially when you can't even figure out who wrote which post-it. Um, so there's a few other tips that I think are really useful. Um, you know, basic logistics like using the right pen if you've got stuff on the wall. Uh, you don't want your pen to run out and you want it to be able to sort of work horizontally upside down in any angle. So, you know, getting slightly better pens. Um, we use rollerballs, um, but it really does help. Um, and then just having a conversation at the beginning about handwriting. Right? Now everything's digital. We used to type in text messages. Um, we don't often have to show our handwriting to other people. I know mine's got a lot worse since school. And from what I've seen using this method, so is uh, most people. So um, it's really important for people to take their time. And it's actually better to do uh, 50 post-its with very clear handwriting than to try and catch everything and have 100 that look like this. Because if you have to analyze this and do a workshop, it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> um, the other thing is sometimes you're tempted to just keep moving on. Like, oh my god, that's another great finding and another one. And so you start to write you know, shorter and shorter phrases thinking, oh, I'll remember this. Um, actually, it's better to work as a team because you've got four to five people. Um, each one can tackle a different issue. It's better to write down in detail what you're covering so that's really clear and unambiguous when you come back to it later. Um, you know, for selfish reasons, I say this to all the stakeholders because I'm the one who has to read it afterwards. So I want to make sure I understand that and don't miss anything. Um, so step four, um, what you do then is either at the end of the day or the next day you have a workshop. And you already have all your materials. You take the printouts of the screen and you have the post-its. And with a pen you can kind of circle your themes um, and you can tidy them up a little bit, remove some duplicates, things like that. And then you just run through it with the stakeholders, issue by issue. And you're all on the same page because you've all observed it together, you've all recorded the issues, and you've all agreed on what needs to be fixed. You're focused on the research, on the evidence, and you've basically done your analysis. So um, what they leave with is a checklist of things they need to fix. They can start putting that right back into design. Um, so it's important all the sort of key design teams. And you know you can use this for iterations as well. So um, the last slide is really just a summary of the sort of key principles. So this is really all about when you just don't have time to do the full sort of UX testing usability research method, but you don't really want to cut corners. You still want the findings to make sense, to be based on evidence. You want to have some sort of reliable method. Um, so this gives you that fast turnaround. It's really just one day of testing, and you can complete the cycle within a week. Um, you can use it for multiple iterations because it's pretty low cost um, and it feeds straight back into design. You're not having to wait a week or two just to turn up with a presentation and tell everybody what happened in the testing. You know, the, the team can start to redesign the very next day. And you know, in theory, you could be doing another uh, rapid active test the following week or even just a couple of days later. Um, it involves the stakeholders, which is always a good thing. That's why you don't need a report because they're already on board. Um, and it works well if you have very focused objectives. So if you have four or five use cases or a new feature, or you have specific research questions. If you have very broad exploratory questions, this isn't the right method, so you have to choose when to use it. Um, that's the end of my talk, so thank you very much for listening. Um, so